Jeff Bezos, for example, says when he wakes up, he likes to lay in bed for like one or two hours. Started two clothing brands and he works exactly one hour a day. So you can make probably up to $1 million a year just with that. Like Confucius said, the man who chases two rabbits catches none. So yeah, let's talk about daily routine for a second because I think ideally, I would say about 60% of your life should follow a strict routine. I've tried to do a 100% perfect routine. Just if you're traveling, busy, it never, and then you start getting mad at yourself for not doing it ever. Anybody have that where you're like, oh, I should have a disciplined routine, then you don't do it perfect, then you get mad at yourself, then you don't do it at all. all right. So if you can get 60% of your month, so that's 18 days, to be pretty disciplined, then 30%, I like the 60, 30, 10 split on a lot of stuff. So in 30% of your is like semi-disciplined, okay? Semi, this is disciplined. I, uh, so this just means like, you know, somewhat. And this is undisciplined, okay? I just wanna do that first because if you, if I don't say that, people go crazy with this and they, Jeff Bezos, for example, says when he wakes up, he likes to lay in bed for like one or two hours. Isn't that very different than you see on Instagram? What everybody says? I wake up at 3.45 in the morning and I, that's, I mean, go straight to the top. Jeff Bezos, he's like, I don't like to do any meetings before 10 a.m. I like to have at least one hour. Winston Churchill, the leader, he used to not get out of bed till two o'clock in the afternoon and he's accomplished a lot of stuff. So it's okay to have some 40% not that disciplined, but I think you should have 15, 20 days a, a month where you, you did pretty disciplined. So then what should be on the discipline? I think there's a book, can you pull up this book called uh, Deep Work? So it's hard for a person to really focus for more than three hours a day. So what I like to do is three hours of deep work. And I'm talking about business, okay? Focus. Then three hours of medium where you're a little bit distracted. And then three hours of light work. Because if you're actually building something, you're not gonna be able to accomplish everything in three hours a day. If, it depends how big your company is. At least, if you don't care that much about money, you could just set up your whole life right here. And you could make 500, I know a guy, one of my uh, former employees, he told, he's very, remember I said you have to know yourself, you know your own personality? He read himself, he's like, Ty, I hate work. He's like, I don't give a shit. I don't care about being rich. I just, he like, he's like, I just like to relax. He likes other things. Right. He likes to read books. Stuff. So in 20, probably 18, he stopped working for me, started two clothing brands, and he works exactly one hour a day. That's it. He runs Facebook ads. His wife works more. Both of them, okay. But they're a pretty successful couple, and they make, they probably net around 800. They do like six to eight million in revenue at about 10% margins. So he makes like 800, he makes like 70,000 net a month to live on. But he would be, he's probably, between his wife and him, they're probably just this. So you can make probably up to $1 million a year just with that profit, okay? If you want to make, you know, if you wanna have a company that's doing 10 million, you're gonna probably have to work at least six hours a day. And if you wanna do more than 10 million, I think you're gonna have to work nine hours. But, especially at the beginning, eventually the business, 40 moves, eventually you can bring it, you can sell some of the company and let somebody else run it. But, so what should you do here in three hours? I was actually doing deep work before I came down here. I like to like, if you can make a cave is the best thing. So I was up there, my assistants, we travel with 
black our own blackout window things to sleep. It's important. Don't have any light when you sleep. It messes up your unless you wake up early, early. But they sealed off that room, and I just kept it dark and just turned one light on and had my laptop. I did about an hour of deep work before I came here. So it's like no distractions. I didn't check social media once. I didn't do any personal things. I didn't care how I looked. I was like, just like, just like thinking. I like to go through my, I have, I use, we don't use Slack that much. We use WhatsApp. Um, so I have my WhatsApp groups. I have my email, you know, my two main things. And I just, as I scan through them, it reminds me of things. So I'm telling people what to do. So that would be three, ideally, if I wasn't traveling, you could lock yourself in a room for like three hours. It's like, like I said, the more, the less stimulus, the better. I would not try to do it in this room. This room's too exciting, right? So if you wake up and you start, if you're a morning person, you wake up at, you know, six, you could start this at about seven. I think you should do other stuff for an hour. Start this from seven to 10, just like lock yourself in. Then the medium work you can do with some distraction, that's like when I walk to the gym, for example. I think you should find a gym that's about an hour walk away. I try to, ideally, then you do an hour of calls, walk to the gym. Then when I'm at the gym, I, I don't do that much work, ideally, or else you'll get distracted, but I do listen to like an audio book. So I'm getting some work done, but sometimes I text and Gym is like somewhere between these two. Light work is where, like last night we went to con and I was checking my phone every once in a while just for stuff. Try to run, be able to run your whole business off your phone. So, but this is the most important. This, if you can get this in and set up, I, I'm super fast with it. I, I think I'd like to be in a competition, the fastest person with the laptop in the world. I think I had a roommate a long time ago. He was the fastest guy I ever saw with a laptop. And I was like, teach me how you do that. It was this, this guy from Cambodia. Navon Nee was his name. I was like, man, you're 10 times faster than anybody ever. So I set up everything with shortcuts. I never used the, never used the mouse pad. Never. <laughs> Travel with an ergonomic mouse that I can, I mean, I, sometimes I watch new employees. I'm like, holy shit. You're gonna be poor from your laptops using skills, just so slow. I know all the shortcuts, like a lot of people don't know, like archiving email, you can just press E. People are sitting there clicking. So I become like super, in this three hours, I'm telling you, I, most people would take six hours to do that. I'm just quick. I use WhatsApp because I can forward messages. I leave a lot of voice memos. You're gonna waste a lot of time writing messages to your team. What I like to do is write one sentence so they see what it's about, and then I leave a voicemail. Voice memos, you can run an empire with voice memos. It's pretty insane. And, and when you text everything, they lose the context. They can't hear your tone of voice, like when you leave a voice memo. So I have here, you can see my WhatsApp. I've got it all. Every WhatsApp group has a, a leader, a manager name, so you could just see like, and I use labels. WhatsApp is not the perfect tool. I'm almost done building a competitor, but I have my super urgent ones. So I can go into the labels. I have 103, but I don't, a lot of them aren't already answered. So I probably have 20 to do. Any questions on that? How does light work look like for you? Light work is like I was at dinner with family and I would just check probably I took like two phone calls during, we were there for like four hours. Probably took two phone calls for 15 minutes each. Then went back to the table, was with other people. And then I probably answered five emails and five chats. So I probably had a four hour, three hours. I was probably of dinner. I probably worked for like 45 minutes, 30, 40 minutes. And no work means you're in flight mode on the phone or not reach Which one? This one? Yeah, exactly. Like, I turn my phone off when I go to bed. You got to be careful. I don't take your phone within 30 minutes of going to bed. You can, what you can do that I do is I have another phone as an emergency phone. And I keep that one by my bed. Ideally, do not bring your phone into the bedroom. I leave it in the bathroom on the kitchen sink. It's just temptation to re And then also, if you get a stressful message right before you're going to fall asleep, 
fucks with your sleep. So, yeah. And deep work, you said, mainly is telling your team what to do, just going through your very... Yeah, it could be anything. Deep work is like, you know, the seven habits of highly effective people. Do the first things first. So what's the stuff that makes you money? <laughs> Focus on that. It's easy to get distracted, you know? So, yes, it can be telling your team what to do, but if you have a smaller team, it could just be three hours of recording content <laughs> for yourself or, you know, copywriting can be one thing. I would not do more than three things in this session. So you ideally at least one hour on one thing. So like I just answered emails basically for one hour. That was it. So don't do like 15 minutes of one thing. 50. That can be done here. See, you're more distracted. So let's say you have 10 other things to do besides email. In this medium session, you could divide 10 by three hours, 180 minutes and spend 18 minutes on you know, 10 different things. This should be no more than three most important things. Now, let me talk about, you want me to talk about what, remember how I said if you wake up at six, don't do anything for an hour, don't start this for an hour? So the first hour, what I think you should do is, this goes to the integrated, uh, the integrated life here. Did they get rid of that other second camera? We should, it's all set up the second camera. Put it right on there my tripod that, that we brought and just grab one of my phones. So in the morning, let's say, who here wakes up at six o'clock? Anybody? Okay, when do most people wake up? Eight? Okay, let's say eight. So if you wake up at 8 a.m., then I think eight to nine, you should have a routine. That's not just what, I don't think you should wake up and go right to work. Like I said, go straight to the top. Jeff Bezos, like he doesn't like to go straight into work. Okay. And he's done pretty well. He's made about 200, <laughs> 200 million million dollars. It's pretty good, not bad. Uh, or 200,000 million, am I right? Yeah. 200,000, is that right, 200,000 million? I think that's right. 1,000 million is a billion. So he seems to be more qualified than most Instagram influencers about daily routine. So what I would do here is your four pillars, which is health, wealth, love, happiness. So for example, here, like I did, I didn't have much time, so I just did like burpees. Just even if you do like 10 burpees, just something like that. So I think burpees are super good, especially anything with jumping. You can go outside, walk. Wealth, what I do do in the first hour is write the three most important things I wanna do that day. So I, I, I actually set a timer and do one minute of each. So I'll do like one minute of burpees, one minute writing three things. I'm, I, I write it on a piece of paper too and then I take a picture of it. So I, if I lose my notepad, I have it. And then when you start on your, when you start here, you have the three things to do for one hour each. So, and then for love, I think you should write, I write somebody. Message some, message some friends. Or who here is on Tinder? Anybody? You two looked at each other like you didn't want to admit. Is your girlfriend here? You don't want her to know you're on Tinder? <laughs> no, like I actually think if you're single, you should make that early priority. Love, have, mating is the most important thing. If you ask a scientist, they say mating is the most important thing. We make money for mating. So it doesn't make sense. A lot of people are being taught that dating is like a low priority thing. This is just not scientific at all. Not, that's why we're talking about this thing in your 20s. I mean, this is not crazy people are being told this. So you should go out in your 20s, remember? It's insane to not go out in your 20s. When are you gonna go out? When you're in a wheelchair in 90? It's bizarre. So um, I think you can do even some dating stuff or if you're married, you could write your wife a nice letter, like do something like that, you know? And then happiness, 
I, this is where I like to do this imagination session. Just spend one minute imag imagining what your life would be like when you had perfect health, perfect wealth, perfect love. Like I think about those things, so like specific. Like, ah, who here likes this house here? So you can, think, you can use this house to imagine when you have a house like this. I think that's super good, man. I think it's just as good as meditation. People are super, is this gonna bother you all? Or is this okay? Good, okay. Um, we don't have that one that's on the legs, do they? It's all, do you have the little portable leg one that's about this tall? Really, they usually bring it for the desk. They need to. Yeah, put that a little higher. Let's put it higher. You guys are just going to have to look around that. Sorry. Um, so that's, and then you're like brushing your teeth and doing all that stuff. And that takes, should take about an hour. Drink all the health stuff. You can drink water. Best time to get sun all early in the morning. You can go for a jog, whatever. But I do like to do like four minutes, you'd be surprised if you do those four minutes all the time, it also reprograms your brain to be more disciplined. Then at nine o'clock, if you're a business person, you want to get into business pretty soon. You can't put it off. I wouldn't put it off for like five hours. I'd get right to it. So then from nine to 12, and watch, I'll show you, this works out perfectly. So by 12 o'clock, you've done your three hour deep work, right? Also, who here does intermittent fasting? By the way, if you're skinny, don't do intermittent fasting. It's, I, it's bullshit. I do not agree with that. You, you can fast for health reasons, but people, I remember I was in Canada at the gym, and there's the skinniest Indian guy I've ever seen. This guy's like 2% body fat. And he had a trainer who had like 3% body fat, and they did cardio the whole time. And he was paying this guy, was like executive, I could tell he was like a CEO. I wanted to go up and be like, do you have fucking eyeballs, bro? Can you look in the goddamn mirror? Do you need more cardio? Are you trying to evaporate into the <laughs> air? I'm like, you need to do weights all the time. And I guarantee you that guy, when he sees intermittent fasting, he's like, yeah, that's for me. I'm like, I call the death of common sense, right? So if you're a bigger stock, there's like old school, they used to put people in three categories. Endomorph, ectomorph, mesomorph. So you're like an endomorph. That means you can be the strongest in the room, but you can also be the fattest. It's just like how it goes. Mesomorph, then you have ectomorph, which is like insanely skinny. Hard for you to be super strong. I mean, you can be strong, but, and then you have mesomorph, which is in the middle. So if you're a mesomorph or endomorph, you, intermittent fasting makes a lot of sense. If you're ectomorph, fuck that. You got blessed with the ability to eat all the time, as long as you eat healthy. So by here, you can do this as your intermittent fasting. You know what I'm saying? Now you're the strongest. I think you should do weights five hours if you, after you wake up. That's when you're the strongest. So this is a cool routine. So at 12, so here you could just use coffee or green tea to destroy your, try to stifle your hunger. Okay, like I got a coffee there. You really shouldn't do cappuccino because it's got calories, but whatever. So here, here, eat your first meal, okay? Then there's an old German saying, I forget how it goes. My grandma used to tell me, and I don't even know if they do it anymore, but my grandma's born in 1918. She said, after a big meal, you should either walk a thousand steps or take a nap. I don't know if you ever heard that. But she used to tell it to me in German. So right here, you eat your first meal of the day for doing intermittent fasting. Then at 12.45 or so, um, or let's say at one, take a nap, power nap. I do power nap is the best return on investment mathematically ever. It's like gives you three hours of energy for 15 minutes. And you can, I like to use a meditation app. So if you wanna meditate, they tell you you shouldn't meditate to fall asleep, which is also bullshit to me. I'm like, who makes up these fucking rules? Why can't I have meditation helps me fall asleep? I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna definitely meditate to fall asleep. So I use the like headspace. So you eat, 
let's say you're done eating at 12.30, do some other stuff. Like, don't regiment your whole day so it's to the exact minute. Then let's say at 1, you take a power nap. Then what I do is at 1.30, most scientists think you should eat as much as you can around the middle of the day. Not super early, not super late, right? Some people are guns. But about 1.30 p.m., I make a pre-workout. Now, I know some people say pre-workout is a scam. I think that's bullshit. I think pre-workout probably, besides protein, is probably your most important um, supplement. Because besides, I mean, vitamin, I'm just saying it's very important because it makes you work out. You can lift heavier. If you've ever taken a real pre-workout, you get fucking wired up. <laughs> it's like going on meth at the gym. I mean, you're like, ah, it's right, which... So, but I, but you can make a meal replacement shake too, type. You can do this before. I like to do this actually after. So look what ends up happening. What's your, what's your pre-workout? Pre-workout. I'm making my own now because they have too much caffeine in them. I think you should do 100 milligrams. Because in my 150 body, I built a program around all these scientists and top athletes that I hired. I think you should only get 150 milligrams of caffeine stimulants a day at the max most people get in 400 and so you're hurting your adrenal glands so i that right there is is like 50 milligrams because i won't even drink the full thing so if you have 50 here and then so you let's say you nap around 130 you, what i do is i take my pre-workout and i drink it slowly while i walk to the gym so i do usually by the way i do it more like 12 45 i take a nap so I eat for 45, take a nap. Then at one, I take my pre-workout and start walking to the gym. I pick a gym that's approximately one hour away. So I just drink the pre-workout slowly. You wanna have a pre-workout about 20 minutes before, be done with it 20 minutes before you hit the gym. So I drink that and I do business calls. So this is when I'm going into my medium distraction. So I'm walking around, but the phone is the phone in Zoom is a super powerful tool, man. It's underrated. All like every method of communication is very powerful if used at the right place. People overuse Zoom calls. Like you can't close big deals on Zoom. If I have a million dollar deal, I fly 100% of the time. People are way too pussies about flying. I had a next door neighbor in Beverly Hills, and I asked him. He, I don't think he was a billionaire, but he was rich. I mean, he probably five, six, seven hundred million dollars. He sold a big clothing brand. And um, he told me, I was like, what's your routine? And he's like, I mean, he's retired now. But he said, when I was working, every Sunday night, I would fly to Italy, to Milan for fashion meetups. Meetup, he had an office manufacturing clothes there. But this is from Los Angeles. He's like, shh. And he's like, every Wednesday, I would come back to be with my family. I'd get home Wednesday night. So he was only there for really like one and a half days, you know? But he's like, I learned to travel. I would read books, do work in the plane. And I said, oh, did you do that a lot? He's like, 20 years every week except holidays. So once I, I started thinking about that, and I was like, you know what? Once again, the richest guys in the world, if you study them, they fucking fly for meetings. And they come to the same. I once went to a meeting. I wanted to test this. I did a meeting from LA. I flew from LA. Um, one of the richest guys in Germany invited me to speak to his 14 CEOs. And I flew and I left the next day. It was fine. You can do one day trips around the world. If you go get money, <laughs> that's where people, that's where Zoom is horrible. People become pussies. You cannot close big deals. I challenge anybody who's competing with me and they do it over Zoom, and I fly, I'm going to take all the deals. <laughs> They're never, you cannot close the big deal. You can close little, little dipshitty deals where you make 10 grand or something on Zoom. But anyway, um, I do all the little medium-sized deals when I'm walking to the gym, one to two. And I also call my team. It's good to call your team, talk to them, let people report to you what they're doing. You can tell if people are bullshitting you, by just like, ah, oh, tell me about your day. And people are like, blah, 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 blah. well, I do. And like, yeah, what did you actually accomplish yesterday? So there you walk. Then I think from two, I think you only have to really, if you hit the gym hard, unless you're a pro athlete on steroids, 
you cannot work out longer than one hour at a I worked, I used to work out with this guy named Dorian Yates. Have you ever heard of Dorian Yates? He's, he won six Mr. Olympias. He's like, bullshit, people can't work out more than one hour. Now, Arnold Schwarzenegger used to work at like two, three hours, sometimes more, but these guys were on. If you go on enough steroids, steroids, I've done steroids before. The main thing they help you do, but obviously they give you strength, but they make your joints, they put fluid in your joints, so you're a lot stronger just holding a bar, but also recovery is fast. If you ain't on steroids, and you can work out for, you're not working out hard enough. Like Dorian Yates, he destroys you in 45 minutes. He's like, you ready to go? We're gonna squat? I worked out with Tom Platts too. He used to do 10 minute sets of, of uh, squats. He said he could do it once a month and he'd have to rest for 30 days. He would do uh, 100, 110 kilos for 10 minutes. Try that. Anyway, when you work out going straight to the top, learn from the best guys, they're like, hit the gym, destroy yourself, and then leave, you know? Now, if you're trying to be a pro athlete, it's probably not better to walk one hour to the gym because you kind of tire yourself out. But nobody here is trying to be a pro athlete, right? Everybody here is trying to make money. You're trying to be a pro athlete. It's going to be hard to be a pro bodybuilder and make a lot of money. It's just... Like Confucius said, the man who chases two rabbits catches none. That doesn't mean you have to do only one thing in life, but I think you have to have one focus. You could be a business, you could be an athlete. There's very few that can do both. Um, so walk to the gym, do medium work, drink your pre-workout, then you're out of the gym, then I walk home. So that's, I think you need three hours of activity to be, I've tested, Anything under three hours of being pretty active, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, at least on my body. So, but notice I'm pretty productive. During this one hour I'm at the gym, I probably would not do too much business. That's the light. I, I do so, mostly listening to audiobooks. Also, on the walk, when I'm not on the phone, I'm listening to audiobooks. So, here's a good routine for books for you all. And I follow this. Exactly. So Monday, I take Sunday off. You need one day to rest your brain. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, okay? I just do health, wealth, book, love, happiness. Then I repeat again, health, wealth. So today, I'll be listening to a wealth book. Like I would, so anytime I found myself not, um, so I'll just pull one up that I had here. You can hear it. We get blanked because our organization was not prepared. It's called the Real Life MBA. It's we good by Jack Welch. Coming. Probably considered the A most famous CEO. Threat. But I have probably, let me see. I have in my library, I have 709 books. Audio books, I have 247. And they're all in these four categories. So if you just follow this simple routine for the integrated life, by the way, all of these will help you make more money. Because the health book, obviously, remember I told you the number one thing, successful people have crazy high energy. Obviously, book, business books help you. But love teaches you psychology, which is the underpinning of business. And happiness also teaches you psychology. Most every, everything psychology except health in life. Yes. Um, of which, which of the people that are out there to follow, like for example yourself, who have a lot of content also mm -hmm. as well, like Ed Milet, Cardone, etc., would you say they actually have a great life to follow their overall life? Rest? Because some people are literally, as you say, just rich, yeah. but they have a messed up family life. Yeah. And you seem to have figured out all very, very well, like integrated into, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know Ed Milet. I, I've met him before. I don't know a lot of the, those guys. I know Grant Cardone. Grant has a pretty good life, but Grant's very honest. He's like, I only care about money. I mean, for the most part, but he got into health recently. He's in good shape for, he's in his 60s. He, he's, he, it, we, I actually got him. I don't know if he'll admit this and I'm not sure 100% is true, but we used to talk a lot about it when he wasn't working out. And one of his main, one of my marketing guys went over and took over his marketing 
And that guy, I challenged to start using a trainer. And at that time, they both started working out. So I'm not taking credit, obviously, but I pushed. He was more love money. And he also, obviously, didn't put love as his, of having kids. He had them much later, you know? Which I think in general, I think you should have kids in your 20s, for sure. If you're, just do, if you're scientific, you gotta be very scientific, not emotional. You should have, almost everybody who's successful has kids in their 20s. Pull up real quick the uh, Forbes list. I'm not sure there's anybody who, who didn't have kids in their 20s or early 30s on that Forbes list. How many kids, I think Elon Musk had four before he was late in his 20s, three, four. Um, Bernard Arnault, I know, has a big family. His son runs the business. Um, Jeff Bezos had kids young. Larry Ellison might be the one guy. Does Larry, Google if Larry Ellison has kids. He's single. I know some of the women <laughs> that he dates <laughs> are friends of mine, but, uh, but I think he has kids. I bet you, yep. Oh yeah, his wife is, his daughter's a famous movie producer. Megan Ellison, yeah, she produced some good movies. So anyway, if you just study Warren Buffett, his son runs the business. Uh, Howard, I think's his name. So by the way, empires, a lot of them are run by family. Hugh Hefner's daughter became the CEO. Your kids become part of, part of the empire thinking. It's kids, kids are way more loyal, man. People are full of shit that say family will betray you more. Family can betray you, but Non-family will betray you 100x more likely. Bill Gates obviously had kids young. I'm not sure, but I think they had kids relatively young. Mark Zuckerberg had kids in his, he's number nine. Balmer, Balmer told me, I mean, his kids, when he was the CEO, they were already teenagers. He told me about his son who played football, was 18 when he was, so all these, every single person, so once again, you don't even need my opinion on a lot of stuff. Like, I don't want people following me. I think then it becomes like a cult. A lot of people are following social media people like a cult. To me, my goal is to just be, I'm more of like a teacher trying to show you a mental framework to think through. This is a mental framework right here on the, on. a mental framework is, okay, shit, it's all transparent here. It's all transparent. I know the richest bachelor in the world. Uh, he sold poker. He sold uh, poker stars, but he's on the bottom of the Forbes list. I mean, he's probably worth seven billion, which is good. But I'm just saying, if you're if you understand statistics, so many people had kids young. It's pretty mind blowing. I don't think you necessarily. I I, I'll, I can talk about this since on a Wednesday. Love. I think you should have kids the second you find you're over eighteen and you find somebody who is compatible um, and is a long-term mating qualified person. So I think some people get married at 18 and it's okay. In general, I think if you follow a logical plan, like for my son, should get married around 20. By the way, let me, fuck marriage. Marriage is actually not important. Have kids. Marriage is a, not real but kids are real, <laughs> right? For tens of thousands of years, homo sapiens never got married. That's a new thing. Like in Sweden, where I live in Denmark, Sweden, people don't really get, Germany, people don't get married that much. Do they? Is it a big, people have kids without being married, it's not a big deal. No. So, but they have long-term partners. So I think you should have a long-term partner and have kids by around 28, if you can do it. Now. It's better to never have kids if you can only find a psych, if you're only attracting psychopaths, right? So it's very dependent on your skill at reading people. So if you know how to read people, you should be able to find a long-term mate. Let's say you're 18 watching this. You should be able to find a long-term mate by let's say 25, easy. You should probably have, there's a thing called optimal stopping I have a system called 13 Thesis. It's like 13 foundations of long-term mating. That's actually, it's like the most scientific thing. I couldn't find anything scientific, so I had to build it myself. Same with 150 body. So you, 
you should not, if you have too many partners, you never settle down. And if you have too few, so you should probably have about 12 is the ideal. You should date 12 people before you choose the one. And it doesn't mean you date them for like a year. It could be more than one date. Let's say, so, so let's say you start dating at, you know, 21. You should be able to have 12 qualified people and then you pick the best of the 12. Let's say by your 25, 26. Then you have kid, it takes a year or two to have kid, obviously. So you're 28, have your first kid. If, that's if your goal is to make money because these guys made money and kids make you less distracted for sure. If your goal is not to make money, then you don't have that. This is, I'm assuming everybody's here more interested in business. If you want to be Hugh Hefner or something, although Hugh Hefner got married at, I think, 18 or some shit like that. He got married. I know Hugh Hefner's son. Hugh Hefner is a guy that did the integrated life very well, except he wasn't so into health. Okay. Daily routine. So back to there. So let's say you're walked home at 4 o'clock. Then I think you can switch into the, the lighter work. Then you should be out with people a lot. I think what you guys were doing last night is will make you wealthy. should do that a lot. Go hang out with people. 